For more on this, we turn tonight to former congressman and chairman of the Institute for Peace and Prosperity, Mr. Ron Paul. Ron, nice to have you with us tonight. I appreciate you. your time on this. You heard that report. The administration is confident. I think a lot of people are asking tonight, what does that mean? Well, I don't know what they're confident about. They're confident in telling their lies and hope people will believe it. You know, when you introduced the program, Ed, you said something about being alleged challenges. They never use that word. You know, most of the time when a crime is committed in this country, the stations, when they're not sure, they're careful. They say this is alleged, alleged. But they never do this under these circumstances, and they have zero bits of information. If I had to prove one thing or the other, I'm not in a position to do it. But at least they ought to treat it, you know, with a little bit of intelligence because it's over and over again that the person is guilty and that is the person is uh, the you know the Russians and the Syrians are guilty of a crime and it goes over and over again but you know did that this was cripples and then they finally had to give up you know then nothing came panned out so they had to go on to a new one so as one runs out of steam they create another fake news program and they pound away on it but uh, it's a shame that the American people buy into this but I'm hoping that I sense that at least we run into people that uh, yeah. are saying, you know, enough is enough. And, Congre you know, I, I've seen that. I've t uh, Congressman, what is the mission behind this cell job that's being put on the world, not just the American people, but the world to vilify both Syria and Russia without hard evidence? Why the cell job? Well, I think they have an ulterior goal, and it's been around for a long time, and it has a lot to do with Saudi Arabia and Iran. I think that's the number one. I think uh, works into that are the Shia against the Sunnis, and that works into it. And then there's the neocons in this country who uh, have their agenda and a perpetual war for perpetual profits in the uh, military-industrial conflict, and they all come together. Then you throw in oil, and they all come together, and guess what? It's bipartisan. Yeah. You know, everybody's complaining there's not enough bipartisanship in Washington. You know, Ed, that we have too much of it because they all support this foreign policy that I think is a disaster. And they're encouraging the president to do something. Last, it was on the campaign trail last week talking about taxes and the economy. He says that we're going to get out of Syria. We're going to leave that to somebody else. Now, a week later, we're at uh, a timeline of he's going to do something within 24 to 48 hours. How do you read that? Well, I, I read this by looking at what my assumptions have been all along, because when I listened to the campaign uh, in the presidential race, I thought, oh, well, there's hope here and hope there. But then again, I think you have to not listen to what they say and what they do. And when I saw his appointments and they got worse as the ones he put in, he couldn't stand them because they weren't neocon enough. All of a sudden, the neocons run the show. And so, therefore, that is what really counts. Now, John Bolton, he's really going to help us out on a sensible foreign policy. His record is so bad, and he got us in and pre preached all that fighting in, in Iraq. So I think you have to look at what they do. I think the advisors. But I think Trump might be playing us with a fiddle. You know, one day he's a good guy. I think it's good to get out of the war. We'll throw that to the libertarians. That's what Ron Paul's been saying all along. But then the next day, there's a change, and it's 100% it's opposite. Yeah. Nothing can change that big. And it's, it's amazing the American people buy into that and just not pull their hair out and say, hey, enough is enough. Why don't you tell us the truth? All right. And the chemical attack did take place. We do know that for sure. There's evidence of an attack. Who do you think would be behind that? And you're talking about the most recent one. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, the one thing is, is I, I don't know. Uh, I think the least likely would be Assad. This whole idea, Assad, and it's over and over again. I probably heard it ten times today. Assad is gassing his own people, and they've said that every time it happens, Assad. And then a month or two later, they prove that it was absolutely wrong. So I, I, I cannot see any reason why Assad would do this. There's no reason for Russia to have done this. There's somebody who wants to stir, stir up trouble, and the people who want us to stay there. So so we're getting, let's say there's a hint, there's a bone thrown out, we might leave, according to Trump. Well, no, we have to have a reason for staying. We're not going to let this happen. We, that's the problem. But, you, you know, the McCain's people say, oh, we left, uh, we left Iraq too soon, and that's what happened. ISIS came in. Well, of course, the evidence is pretty strong that uh, we've been pretty friendly with ISIS, and we use ISIS to try to fight our battle. So somebody wanted to stay there. I think uh, the policymakers here yeah. did not want us to leave. and. 
and uh, and they and, and somebody does it for them. But uh, I, I just think this uh, whole idea that all of a That's sudden true. that uh, Assad's gassing his own people, I think, is total nonsense. Former Congressman Ron Paul and Chairman of the Institute for Peace and Prosperity, Mr. Paul, thank you so much tonight.